All right, so we're going to attempt to do a pepper review on the Ricotto Yellow Pepper. And you can probably see them in the background. So try to move some of these plants out of the way. And you see all those yellow things in the background? Yep, that's the Ricotto Yellow. Now, it's a smooth stem. It's got a little purpling at the nodes, but it's generally, generally a green stem. There's no hair on the stems at all. As far as the leaf goes, I, if I'm not mistaken, the leaf on this is a regular leaf. No hair on it. I don't think there's any pubescence on this plant. Might be a little pubescence on there. But you can see there's a ton of peppers on this plant. We'll pick one because it's just going to be too difficult for me to try to... Fortunately, I can't give you a full review on it because I can't really get to them, unfortunately. And so, this is what it looks like. Kind of triangular in shape. Looks kind of like a Fatale, but it's not quite a Fatale. It's definitely not a Habanero. I don't know if this is a black seed variety. We'll open it and take a look at it. And uh, I'm per quite sure it's going to be hot. This is what the cap looks like on it. It's just very short crown. Not a very big calyx on the top of it. And I don't know too much more about it other than that it's going to be probably deadly hot. But generally with this particular variety of pepper, I'll see if I can pick one that has this feature I'm looking for. Just getting in here is not going to be fun. And these peppers are just starting to they're just starting to uh, starting to come out now. So what I want to show you, here's another one. What I want to show you is that uh, typically with these peppers, you're going to see this crown at the top. You're going to see this step. It's going to come down like that with the top of it. That's a common characteristic with this pepper. They don't all do it. It really depends on how much sun it gets, how much water it gets. And they'll, they'll get their true form when they're out you know, in the sun, growing, you know, in the best conditions for that plant, it'll get the, the proper shape. If not, it's just going to get like a shape like this. But in general, they all look the same. But you want to look for that crowning on the top. That's really a good characteristic of this pepper. Again, I don't know if it's black seed or white seed. It is a ricotto pepper. So ricotto peppers tend to be extremely hot, fierce heat on them uh, that tend to have a, a acid like 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 a battery acid burning your mouth type of a heat I got a feeling that's what I'm going to expect from that because I've eaten other ricottos and they're just very unpleasant to eat raw I mean they're great in cooking and all but the, the last time I ate a ricotto pepper I didn't need any more of those because they really upset my stomach they're very spicy type peppers they just come back at you and over and over so anyway here it is and let's give it a taste test. All right, what's up, guys? We're going to do a taste test on this today called the Ricotto Yellow Pepper. So I don't know much about it. I do believe it's from South America, I think from Peru. I, I'm not sure off the hand. I'll put all the correct information in the description. But we're going to do a taste test on this. I am not looking forward to this. I got a feeling this is going to be very, very unfriendly uh, heat-wise. So let's give it a bite. So far, very low heat. It does have heat on it, but it's very low. Seeds are not black. They're regular seeds. Very fruity flavor to it. Habanero type fruity flavor. Slightly different though. Heat is building. Very thin wall on it. 
Now I chewed this thing all around my mouth pretty good. The only area it's affecting right now, underneath my tongue and across the roof of my mouth in the back, going towards the back of the mouth, going towards my throat. It's, the heat is picking up a lot. Back of my throat is starting to burn a lot more. It's really burning the back of my throat. Not even burning my tongue. It's not burning the top of my tongue at all. A little bit underneath the front of the tongue. The back of the throat is absolutely cooking. Holy mackerel. The heat on the back of the throat is intense. It's not a gut cramper though. I didn't start heat cupping, but I do feel like I want it though. My eyes are watering like crazy. Wow, that was strange. That heat was... Only thing that heat was doing was hitting the back of the throat. Wow. That's it. No tongue burn, almost none. Eyes are running, nose is running, no hiccups. My, I feel like the veins in my head are throbbing right now. Whew. Oh. That was a very strange effect. Like I say, very little burn around the tip of my tongue, underneath the tongue, a little bit around there. Very little. All the heat went right to the back of the throat and burned the whole back of the throat. Very, very hard. Very hard. I'm, I'm the kind of person I like heat better on the back of my throat than I like on my tongue. So there is a point in which that becomes overwhelming. This is at that threshold for me. I've had heat that was so hot in the back of my throat, I was running around my yard. Running around my yard. In panic. Because it was burning so bad I didn't know how to deal with it. I was almost going to go into shock. I've had heat that bad. You know, fooling around with these super hot peppers. You don't know. Like this one. There was no heat in the beginning. Just ate it. Nothing. All of a sudden, swallow it. Minute later, whoa, it kicked in. It's definitely a creeper heat on this thing. Now, I am a little concerned. It has a certain flavor to it that, for me, tends to be a spicy effect. When I say spicy, and this is for all the new people. I know I have a lot of regular viewers. But when I say spicy, I'm not referring to heat. I designate heat separately so I can describe the effect and the flavor. Uh, when I say spicy, I'm talking about something that sits in your stomach and it, you keep belching it up for hours and hours, sometimes even days, it stays in your palate. For me, I, the fatalities are the worst for me. I get that effect. I'm sick for days from it. Uh, I call it the fatality effect because it's really one of the few peppers that do that to me, but they do do it to me. It's not the heat. It's just some kind of an oil in that thing and it just, man, does it keep coming back. And if you eat it with me, it's even worse. You just got that flavor in your mouth. So this is a pepper that has that kind of fatali flavor a little bit. Believe it or not, it kind of tastes like a fatali a little bit. But it was fruity like a habanero in the beginning. But the aftertaste, the aftertaste now that's sitting in my mouth, it's like that fatali flavor. It just hangs there for a while. I'm hoping it's not going to upset my stomach because some of these peppers, I, I just did a review on the Dulce number no. 2. Oh, that upset my stomach for two days. Worse than a fatale. I, I'm hoping to add that to the video as a, a, in the beginning of the video, warning, you know, could upset your stomach. But this, the heat's coming down now, but this was really, wow. Whew, man, did that hit the back of my throat something awful. That was just, I totally didn't expect that from that pepper. Didn't really burn the tongue. It did a little bit, you know, very, very slightly, almost almost undetectable. But the back, it, it was absolute destruction to your tonsils, your throat. That was, it was so hot, it was throbbing. 
wow, that was a little strange. It was almost, the heat effect on the back of my throat was almost as intense as a Buchalokia, which is a million BTU, million plus BTU, uh, not BTU, uh, Scovillian, it's SHU. It was almost equivalent to that to a buchaloki and, and that and, you know eating a buchaloki and getting that burn in the back of your throat. Except the buchaloki burns your mouth and everything too. This didn't burn anything really, but the back of my throat, and I chewed it up good. But that flavor is hanging around in my mouth now. I can taste it. I'm hoping it doesn't start. If I start belching an hour after I eat this thing, then I know it's like a fatale. Sick. When I say sick, I'm not saying sick in a sense where um, I'm going to vomit or anything. I just, my stomach feels upset from it. It's, I get that from radishes too. If I eat radishes, I'm like sick the entire time after I eat those radishes. I feel like it's lousy. I call it, I call it shit belly. All right. I, I don't want to get a strike on my video from freaking YouTube for this, but I call it shit belly. And that's just basically your stomach feels heavy, your, your gut doesn't feel right, you just feel crappy, man. And, it, you know, it's, if it's, it's one thing if you were to just feel crappy for, you know, a half hour, an hour, and it's over. But when you're crappy for the entire day after you eat it, and you just, no matter what you eat to try to wash it down, drink, and it, nothing helps. It's just that crappy feeling is there until you expel it sometimes it could take two days and and that's how long some of times that lasts some of these peppers do this to me the dulce number two is one of them and so far the fatale and there are a couple of others i don't remember offhand but yeah there's a few peppers that do that to me and it's like you know i i really don't like that effect but it has that aftertaste of a fatale. The, the beginning taste tasted very much like a, a habanero, nice and fruity and free. Nice and easy, not much heat at all. The heat came in afterwards, and it only affected the back of my throat. But, yeah, that's it. That was your pepper review for the Ricardo Yellow. And like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.